Option trading is so complicated, so confusing. Yeah. Well, since I'm a designer, I really want to use my design skills, design thinking to tackle this very interesting problem, to introduce, to explain option trading in the simplest way possible. In this video, I want to cover the very essentials of buying put options, what it is, how it works, and show you some examples of how to do it on Robinhood. Music, let's go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. In the previous video, we have covered by call. So in this one, we're gonna cover by put. The goal of this video is to explain buying put options without taking too much of your time, without too many graphs or too much math. You don't need to smash the like button yet. Do it in the very end if you actually find this video useful. Hold me accountable, okay? Without further ado, let's dive right into buying put options. Whew. All right, so this is essentially what buy put is. One put option, it means an opportunity to sell a share of a particular stock at a specific price, which we'll call this a strike price, before a specific date, the expiration date, okay? It might sound a little complicated or confusing already because there are three things all baked into one concept of option. It's okay, it will make sense very soon. So for buy and put, that you will hear this phrase quite a lot from Wall Street or from your friends who trade options or some finance media outlets. What it means is that you're buying one put option contract. You're buying a contract, okay? So this is what a contract might look like. So in this contract, this put option contract, it defines the number of options, 100. So in option trading, it always trades in the block of 100. So each contract will have 100 options. So when you buy a put, you're buying one put contract that has 100 options. You buy two puts, two contracts, 200 options. Okay, so also define the stock, uh, the strike price is this price, and the expiration date is this date, okay? So by having this put option contract, what you can do with it is that you can sell 100 shares of Apple, right, Apple, at this price, strike price, 120, before this expiration date, okay? But you might ask, like, how do you sell exactly? Well, first, you will need to buy 100 shares from the market, and then you use this put option contract to exercise it, to sell 100 shares, okay? So if you buy a put, you buy this put option contract, you are basically betting Apple stock is going to drop below 120 because if that happens, let's say it drops to $100, then you can first buy 100 shares from the market at 100 and then use this put option contract to sell those 100 shares at 120 profit the difference, okay? If you're buying the put, that means you're the buyer, which means there will be a seller who sells you the put. I'm not going too details on the seller side because that's a video for another time. All you have to know is the seller needs to have some cash. In this case, it will be 12K as collateral. Why? Because in case when you have this contract, you want to exercise it, you want to sell 100 shares at 120. Who are you gonna sell it to? You're going to sell it to the seller the person who sold you the put option contract. So 100 shares at 120 is 12K. That's why the seller needs to have 12K in hand, okay? What would a seller get in this case? Well, you buy the put option contract, right? You pay $655 to the seller and you get the contract, okay? That's a fair trade, fair deal. That's how the exchange happened behind the scenes. So right now, you actually have got the basics, the fundamentals, the very essentials of what put options are and how it works behind the scene. Let's take a look at Robinhood. It's a web version. You see Apple, this is the stock trading interface. So in here, you see trade Apple options. If you click into it, you will see the option trading UI, option trading interface. Right now, is the default is buy call because buy and call are selected. So to buy put, you just simply have to click the put so everything will switch to put. So you will see buy, put, right? So now let's go back to my file. And I have actually taken a screenshot earlier and now we can see how the put option contract will match the Robinhood option trading UI. You see the put option contract, you would define the stock, Apple, Apple, right? Uh, strike price 120, it says 120, it's a strike price. 
and then expiration date is October 30th, which is a Friday, typically. And then the option price is $655. So it's at 6.55 only for the price. It was because it's listed as the price for each option. And if you remember, for option trading, it always trades in the block of 100. So you always have to multiply this number by 100 to get the actual cost, the actual amount it will cost you if you want to buy the put option contract. You also see the share price, the current price is 115.08 right here as well. So now let's take a look at the relationship between the stock price and the option price. Generally speaking, the stock price is inversely proportional to the put option contract price, which means if the stock price goes up, the put option contract price goes down. So let's say Apple right now is 115.08, it goes up to 125.08. Then the, option, the put option contract price will go down to like 555 instead of 655. If the stock price goes down, the put option contract price will go up. So if Apple drops from 115.08 to 105.08, then the put option contract might go up to $755, let's say. Okay, so this is the relationship between the two. How do we make money from buying a put? Well, you, there are two ways. One, like what we discussed before, you can buy 100 shares from the market, then you exercise the put, which means you can sell 100 shares of Apple at the strike price. Typically, what you buy should be a lower price and what you sell should be a higher price, so you can profit the difference. Or if you remember the relationship, if the stock price goes down, the put option price goes up. So you can wait for Apple to go down, then, then the put option contract price will go up to 755 and then you can sell the put option contracts to another person to make the profit in that way as well, okay? So let's take a look at more in detail of uh, those two options, those two ways of making money in buying puts. So in this case, on Monday, you buy this Apple 120 put. And back then the market price is 115.08. And this is the bull case for your put position because on Wednesday, just like how you imagined, Apple price drops, it drops to 110 which is great for you, right? Because in this case, you can exercise your 120 put, right? In here, 120 put, you have it, you can exercise it. So first, you buy 100 shares from the market at 110, that's the market price. And then you can sell 100 shares at 120, which is defined in the contract actually, right? So you can profit the difference and the actual net profit that you have will be 1,000, the gain, minus the 655 that you pay for this put option which net to be 345. Well, of course, there's another way as well. If you remember, if the stock price goes down, the put option contract price goes up. On Wednesday, the price of Apple drops. So in this case, the put option contract price, the exact same contract that you're holding, it might go up to 1355. So in the Robinhood UI, you will actually see instead of 655, you will see 1355. So in this case, you will just sell the put option contract to somebody else, call it a day, profit $700 right away. And this is another funny thing that I noticed in many of those YouTube videos. They never explain that you can sell the put option contract to profit in this way. They only talk about exercising. I don't know why, it's just funny that I see that. I think it's really important to know, especially for beginners. You are not limited to exercising it. By just selling the put option contract, you actually have some advantages. One is not everybody has 11K to begin with to buy 100 shares and then exercise it to sell those. In this case, all you need is $655. And if you predicted the direction of Apple, right? you can profit right away pretty quickly. Another advantage is that you only have to buy the put, sell the put, done. But in this case, you have to buy the put, buy the shares, and then exercise the puts to sell the shares. So I prefer the second way. It's simpler, I like simplicity. Now let's take a look at what will happen to your put option contract if Apple actually goes up in price throughout the week. On Monday, you purchase the same Apple 120 put. Uh, when the market price is still 115.08. On Wednesday, hmm, it goes up to 120. Friday, it goes up even more to 125. Well, what can you do? You can still exercise it, the put, technically, but it does not make any sense to do so. Doesn't make any sense. Because to do that, that means you have to buy 100 shares from the market at 125, and then sell those 100 shares with what the option defined, the, the strike price, at 120. Then you have this massive loss. 
So what can you do in this case? Well, if you remember, if the stock price goes up, the put option contract price goes down. And one thing to note is that by the end of Friday exp expiration, if the Apple market price is above the strike price in your put option contract, then that put option contract price is going to go to zero. So in our example, on Friday, the Apple market price is 125, which of course is above the strike price, 120, right? 125 is above 120, 120, 120. So what it means is that the put option contract price is going to go to zero on Friday with the contract that you have. So if you can see this illustration on Wednesday, because Apple goes up, so the put option contract price will go down from, for example, 655 all the way down to 20, not zero yet on 20 on Wednesday. And on Friday, it goes to zero, just like how this explains, right? So you can just do nothing. Let your put option contract expire worthless because at that point, there's no advantage of using them at all. So all you lose in this case is 60.55, which is the amount you pay for the put option contract on Monday. This is what will happen on Friday uh, on Robinhood. So you see the market price is 125, share price 125, anything below it, any put option, at any strike price below 125, 124, 23, blah, blah, blah. All of these are going to zero, including the 120 put that you have, okay? So there's actually another scenario. On Wednesday, since you have observed that Apple is has been going up, it might not be a good thing to keep holding your put option contract. So you might decide to, okay, I'm going to cut losses. I will just sell the put option contract to somebody else, collect this $20 and call it a day. I'm done this week. So in this case, all you lose is actually 635 instead of 655. Might not be a bad case. But overall, as you can see, if you buy a put, you buy a put option contract, you're actually betting on the downtrend momentum of the underlying stock, which is Apple in this case. Because like in this example, if the Apple actually goes up, the underlying stock goes up, you will lose money no matter what, okay? All right guys, we have covered the fundamentals and two practical examples. One for when the underlying stock price goes up and one for when it goes down. Buying put options is not that complicated overall, isn't it? Do you understand what it is and how to use it now? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. If you have learned what you wanted, congratulations and hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you want to see more videos like this, also consider smashing the subscribe button. This will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!